Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued three edicts for the year 2019 yesterday. Edict number two appointed directors at the Ministry of Finance and National Economy as follows. Ahmed Hassan Hamedan as director of the Central Internal Audit Department and Mohammed Abdel Hakim Abdel Malik as director of the Central Department of Government Procurement. Edict number three appointed Noura Majid Al Ghatam as director of recruitment at the Civil Service Bureau. And uh, edict uh, number four appointed Ahmed Abbas Ali Asiri as Director of Strategic Planning and Projects at uh, the Information and E-Government Authority. Bahrain celebrates the golden uh, jubilee of uh, Bahraini diplomacy. 15 uh, years of strengthening old friendships and forging new ones. 50 years of continuing national sovereignty and progress over the years that enabled uh, the kingdom to achieve its current advanced status regionally and internationally. Diplomats, officials, ambassadors from all countries took part in the special occasion, hailing uh, the wonderful relationship established with Bahrain and its clear and comprehensive uh, vision of openness to the world. 50 years of diplomacy, 50 years of stability, 50 years of wisdom from His Majesty and from His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince. And this is what we, uh, where we uh, get our uh, advice and uh, directives from and we move forward and we can see our country uh, most respectful and uh, most respected country in the world among, among uh, peace-loving and uh, hard-working nations. Bahrain is the first uh, GCC country that was represented and a member of the UN uh, Security Council. It is the first country that have nominated a lady to head the General Assembly of the UN. If that is not, if that doesn't tell anything about the diplomacy, nothing else will. Uh, it is a diplomacy that spread or try to spread the 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 peace uh, and the security of the entire world. We assembled in order to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Bahrain. We, I wish uh, Bahrain and the Bahraini Minister of Foreign Affairs all the best with their uh, endeavors uh, in order to uh, keep Bahrain safe, secure and prosperous. The relation between Indonesia and Bahrain is very good. We are very close. Even the, uh, the relation just started in 1976, but we are getting very close and close. And in Indonesia, uh, we have in our embassy here in Bahrain in 2010, and Bahrain also opened your uh, embassy in Jakarta last year. It shows that the relation between our two countries is very close. Pleasure for me to see so, so much uh, British uh, official involvement, so many British diplomats and statesmen in, woven into the history of Bahraini diplomacy as well. Uh, we work very well together in so many different uh, ways. Uh, and um, so 50 years on, we're just looking forward to the next 50 years. I extend my best wishes and greetings and congratulations on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the founding of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We've been having a great partnership with Bahrain. Our relations are strong as ever, and we continue. We hope to continue this in the next 50 years and beyond. Uh, Bahrain is uh, uh, well known as a very you know, open country. People are very nice, and Bahrain tried for so long years uh, to, to achieve uh, stability and peace and also coexistence uh, among, among the people in the world, and particularly uh, during the period of you know, conflict you know, now. Uh, this uh, uh, objective of Bahraini diplomacy to achieve uh, uh, coexistence in the world is very, very uh, important. And I sincerely, sincerely hope that the Bahraini uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs will continue uh, its efforts to achieve its uh, objective. 50 years of diplomacy means 50 years of engagement, means 50 years of being on the world, uh, on the world screen, means 50 years of partnering uh, with different countries and as well as with the United Nations. Today we have seen that the United Nations is really part of the history of modern Bahrain since 1970 to 71, uh, uh, where we had the UN come to Bahrain and visit. Uh, and then a historical decision was taken to accept Bahrain as a member in 1971 of the United Nations. 
Electricity and Water Affairs Minister Dr. Abdul Hussein Mirza met Abu Dhabi Energy Department Chairman Uweza Murshid Al Marar and its Executive Council member Mohammed bin Jarat Al Falasi on the sidelines of his participation in Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week 2019. The minister was welcomed by the UAE officials and Al-Marar gave a detailed presentation on the Abu Dhabi Integrated Energy Strategy 2030 and the long-term strategy until 2050 on the Green Energy Strategy as well as the progress of the Emirate of Abu Dhabi in this area. Dr. Mirza reviewed Bahrain's plans in the field of sustainable energy and its achievements and national goals. He praised the UAE's experience in sustainable energy and added that Bahrain's leadership and the government looked at further strengthening the bonds of mutual cooperation and exchange of ideas and experiences. Dr. Mirza thanked his host for the welcome and the hospitality and stressed on the close ties between the two brotherly countries as well as the mutual cooperation for ideas and projects in renewable energy. He praised the experience of Abu Dhabi and solar power stations and express his willingness to exchange ideas and experiences to further strengthen the strong relations between the two brotherly countries and the importance of joint projects in the field. The Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Abdul Hussain Al Ali Mirza, visited the Noor Abu Dhabi solar power plant, the largest independent power station in the world. The plant has a production capacity of 1,177 megawatts. The minister met with the chairman of the company's board of directors, engineer Ahmed Mohammed Al Rumethi, and or in executive management, where he presented a detailed presentation to the Noor Abu Dhabi solar power stations energy and green energy strategy. For his part, the Minister of Electricity and Water reviewed the plans of the Kingdom of Bahrain in the field of sustainable energy, praising the pioneering experience of the United Arab Emirates in the field of solar power. He expressed the desire of the Kingdom of Bahrain to activate further cooperation and exchange of ideas and benefit from the experiences of the UAE in all areas, in particular renewable energy fields and the establishment of solar plants. Minister of the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, held a meeting yesterday with the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed Rashid Al Zayani, along with a delegation from the Chamber of Commerce and Industry headed by its chairman Samir Al Nas. This meeting is part of a, a series of meetings being held to communicate and consult with the parties concerned to review the mechanism of applying the value-added tax. The Minister of Finance asserted the Ministry's keenness uh, to achieve the proper application of VAT in all its technical, organizational and procedural aspects in a manner that primarily ensures the rights of consumers. Sheikh Salman noted that the Ministry will continue to organize a number of workshops in the coming period in cooperation with the National Tax Authority of the GCC and the concerned authorities to determine the outcome of the VAT application. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism affirmed uh, that uh, the Ministry shall continue to follow up on the trial period of the VAT application and shall also intensify its inspection campaigns in all markets. For his part, Tessimir Nas expressed his appreciation to both ministers for keeping the communication channels open with the Chamber of Commerce and Industry that shall reflect positively on consumers and the markets in general. The Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, Engineer Islam bin Abdullah Khalaf, said that the Ministry started the work of reclamation for the first phase of the fourth Busaitin Bridge project and the North Manama Bridge, the second phase within the Manama Ring Road project, and it is hoped that the first package will be completed in August. The Minister of Works said that the cost of the strategic project is 94 million Bahraini dinars, financed by the Saudi Fund for Development, which aims to enhance the economic development or movement in the kingdom. The fourth bridge will link the economic tourism and development facilities in Amharrak with the capital Manama, which will provide new access to the uh, Saya and uh, Bandar Sif areas. The minister pointed out that the fourth bridge will make a quantum leap in addressing traffic problems north of Amharrak. Khalaf confirmed uh, that the project is an extension of Al Muharra Ring Road, starting from the intersection of Al Muharra Ring Road uh, through Al Dir, Al Bisaitin, and Al Saya area to the Gulf of Bahrain area, in addition to the construction of the second phase of Manama North Bridge, Sheikh Khalifa bin Salman, at the intersection of Farouk. The bridge consists of five traffic lanes in each direction, and the bridge is connected by two streets with four lanes in each direction. 
Coinciding with the Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's visit to the region, U.S. Special Representative for Iran and Senior Policy Advisor to the Secretary of State, Brian Hook, returned to Bahrain yesterday and spoke about U.S.-Iran policy at the Bahrain Center for Strategic, International and Energy Studies, Dirasat, in a special arranged roundtable discussion. Hook noted that Bahrain is a key partner in the U.S.'s Iran strategy, adding that Iran's support of proxies in Bahrain is part of a much larger strategy to destabilize the region. He also stressed that Iran must uh, stop testing and uh, proliferating missiles, stop launching and developing nuclear-capable missiles, and stop supporting its militias in Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Bahrain, and Yemen. He emphasized that the U.S. and Bahrain work closely to promote stability and strengthen security. He uh, continued by adding that Iran has tried to weaken national identity in Bahrain and create sectarian division, but Bahrain's leaders have responded by deepening their commitment to peaceful coexistence and religious freedom. The chairman of Dirasad, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, affirmed the long standing relations between Bahrain and the United States and Bahrain's commitment to the U.S.'s strategy to combat Iran's destabilizing activities. The chairman also noted that this meeting highlighted the importance of convening really relevant stakeholders in research centers such as Dirasat as a way of coordinating efforts and creating partnerships and express aspirations to continue efforts in this regard. It was a real pleasure to be here uh, in, in Bahrain at this think tank to talk about the United States' very close relationship with Bahrain to address uh, the common threats and the common challenges we face. This is a very good opportunity to talk about how we are partnering to address Iran's threats, its terrorist threats, uh, its maritime threats, and Bahrain has been a superb partner in, in, in our new Iran strategy. Here in Bahrain, Iran has worked very hard to undermine national identity and to create sectarian divisions. The United States and Bahrain have been able to uh, really bring to zero the number of successful attacks against the government and infrastructure here. The Arabian Gulf University AGU was awarded certificates of the university's distance learning department programs by the American Association for Educational Communications and Technology, AECT. AGU President Dr. Khalid al Ohadi said in a statement that AGU is the first university outside the United States to have its academic programs fully accepted, ratified and revised by AECT. Dr. al Ohadi also confirmed that, that the ratification is the result of an agreement signed earlier between AGU and AECT, which is one of the most uh, reputed professional associations and specialized organizations in educational technologies and its application in the educational process on an international level. Here at the Arabian Gulf University, Gulf Cooperation Council that addresses six different countries in the region, accreditation and quality of education is a main priority, especially that our university and our the College of Graduate Study offers programs that are leading program and very specialized in whether in the education field or in the technology fields. So today our department of distance learning have succeeded to be accredited by the American Association of Instructional Design and uh, Workforce Development. This accreditation is actually a milestone toward excellence in the field. This is a wonderful day at AGU. Uh, today we're recognizing the distance learning program and uh, this is a big deal because this is the first international program that AECT has recognized. And AECT is our Association for Educational Communications and Technology. It's the leading organization in educational technology to recognize how to improve teaching and learning. So today we're recognizing the distance ed program. I think the main thing I would say about the AGU distance program is having, we had a team that reviewed all the courses and the curriculum and we found that it's a very good quality. There were no major gaps or missing information that we were, we were glad to see. And so um, overall, we're very pleased with what AGU has presented today.